Hello everyone. Welcome once again to the Codesultant channel. Our discussion is about objectionable current stated in section 250.6 of the Electrical Code. Further, it is important to understand the causes and hazards of objectionable current and why the code prohibits it. In previous videos, we have discussed various concepts related to grounding and bonding, but objectionable current was not explicitly defined in the code. So, what exactly is objectionable current? Let's delve into this topic and explore its implications. During ground fault conditions, current flows through the equipment grounding conductor, which is known as ground fault current. However, what happens when there is current flowing through this path in the absence of a ground fault or a normal operating condition? This is what we refer to as an objectionable current. Objectionable current occurs when there is normal circuit current flowing through paths that are not intended for current flow, such as the equipment grounding conductor, grounding electrode conductor, metallic enclosure, and others. Here are some factors that can cause objectionable currents in electrical systems. 1. Harmonics can result in excessive currents and voltage distortion, leading to undesirable effects. 2. Electrostatic discharge can cause objectionable currents in sensitive electronic circuits and components, leading to malfunctions or damage. Electromagnetic interference can induce objectionable currents in nearby conductors or sensitive equipment, resulting in interference or malfunctions. The most common causes of objectionable current are incorrect wiring connections, improper grounding, or inadequate wire sizing, which can introduce objectionable currents in electrical systems. Here are a few examples of wiring errors. Shared grounding and neutral conductors. In some wiring configurations, the grounding conductor and neutral conductor are shared or bonded together at multiple points. When the neutral is already bonded to the grounding terminal of the transformer and further bonded to the ground at the panel, a situation arises where the load current returns through both the neutral and equipment grounding conductors. As the grounding conductor is connected to all metal parts of the system, the load current is divided, and a portion of it flows to the ground. However, this is not permissible according to the code, except in the case of a ground fault. The illustration provided depicts a utility transformer where the primary neutral is bonded to the secondary neutral, and both are connected to the earth. On the customer side, it is necessary to bond the neutral to the grounding electrode at the service equipment or disconnect. Consequently, the secondary neutral is connected for the second time, resulting in a parallel connection between the neutral and the earth. To understand the system better, let's examine how it operates. When the primary current leaves the transformer winding, it undergoes division. One of the paths leads back to the substation through the multi-grounded neutral conductor. The neutral current flows through the bonding between the primary and secondary neutral conductors. This configuration establishes a parallel connection between the neutral and the earth, enabling electric current to continuously flow into the earth. It is important to note that according to section 250.4, the equipment grounding conductor must be connected to a non-current carrying conductive material that are like to get energized. In the presence of a well casing and metal pipe, it must also be connected to the earth, creating an additional pathway to the ground. Another situation where objectionable currents may arise is when the secondary circuits of a welder are connected to grounded objects. This connection can create parallel paths, resulting in objectionable currents flowing through equipment grounding conductors. This example is mentioned in the informational note of section 630.15, which pertains to the grounding of welder secondary circuits. It is important to note that separately derived systems are not included in this scenario. To prevent objectionable currents, it is recommended to connect the workpiece terminal of the welder to the workpiece or workpiece table instead of the building's grounding system. So, why is it crucial to eliminate objectionable current? Eliminating objectionable currents in electrical systems is crucial for several reasons. Safety. Objectionable currents can pose significant safety risks. They can increase the likelihood of electrical shocks, which can be hazardous or even fatal to humans and animals. Equipment protection. Objectionable currents can cause damage to electrical equipment and devices. Excessive currents, harmonics, or voltage transients can lead to overheating, premature wear and tear, component failures, or even complete breakdowns. Interference reduction. Objectionable currents can generate electromagnetic interference, which can disrupt the operation of electronic devices, communication systems, or sensitive equipment. Prevention of nuisance tripping. Objectionable currents, 
can cause protective devices like circuit breakers or ground fault circuit interrupters to trip unexpectedly. Thermal issues. When objectionable currents flow through resistive connections or loose fittings, they can lead to a temperature rise in electrical components and connections. Furthermore, the sizing of equipment grounding conductors is primarily determined by Table 250.122, taking into account the characteristics of the overcurrent protective device. It is important to note that equipment grounding conductors are not intended to carry current under normal circumstances. Instead, their purpose is to carry fault current of sufficient magnitude to activate the overcurrent protective device in accordance with the specific listing criteria of the protective device. For example, Table 250.122 specifies that a minimum 4AWG copper equipment grounding conductor should be installed for a circuit protected by a 300 ampere overcurrent device. However, a 4AWG copper conductor with 75 degrees Celsius rated insulation has an ampacity of only 85 amperes according to Table 310.16. This ampacity represents just 28% of the rating of the overcurrent device. If objectionable currents flow through the equipment grounding conductor exceeding its ampacity and the overcurrent protective device fails to trip, the resulting excessive heat can pose a significant fire hazard. The National Electrical Code has rules and guidelines in place to prevent objectionable currents and ensure safe electrical installations. Section 250.6A of the NEC provides specific guidance on how grounding and bonding should be arranged to prevent objectionable currents. This section states that the grounding and bonding of electrical systems, circuit conductors, surge arresters, surge protective devices, and non-current carrying metal parts of equipment should be installed and arranged in a manner that prevents objectionable currents. Following the prescriptive method for grounding and bonding as outlined in Article 250 of the NEC can help prevent objectionable currents from occurring. Going back to the first example, where multiple bonds of neutral to ground were set up, Article 250.24A5 lets the connection between the grounded conductor and the grounding electrode conductor happen in various locations. A. On the supply side of the service, disconnecting means. B. Within the enclosure of the service, disconnecting means. Additionally, re-grounding of the grounded conductor on the load side of the service disconnecting means is prohibited by this section. This also aligns with the provision of 250.142B. What if an objectionable current exists in your system? Section 250.6B is about alteration to stop objectionable current and states that, if the use of multiple grounding or bonding connections results in objectionable current and the requirements of 250.4A5 or B.4 are met, one or more of the following alterations shall be permitted. 1. Discontinue one or more, but not all, of such grounding or bonding connections. 2. Change the locations of the grounding or bonding connections. 3. Interrupt the continuity of the conductor or conductive path, causing the objectionable current. 4. Take other suitable remedial and approved action. The provided illustration showcases a system comprising multiple buildings, each equipped with its own dedicated electrical panel. As per the requirements outlined in sections 250.32 and 250.24A5, each panel is equipped with an individual grounding electrode, while the neutral is exclusively allowed to be bonded at the service point, represented by the service equipment in this particular scenario. Within this configuration, whenever an additional earth or grounding electrode connection is established within the same electrical system, a parallel path is formed. Since current flows through all available paths or circuits, the neutral current will travel to and through the earth across multiple circuits. Additionally, the underground metal water pipe aligns parallel to each grounding conductor and connects to the utility neutral at the service disconnect. Similarly, the same holds true for other customers, resulting in all underground water pipes being parallel to the utility neutral. This parallelism contributes to the presence of electric current in the water pipe or the grounding electrode conductor. If the current flow reaches a level that is deemed objectionable, it is important to adhere to the guidelines specified within this section. Section 250.6c states that current resulting from abnormal conditions such as ground faults and from current resulting from required grounding and bonding connections shall not be classified as objectionable current for the purposes specified in 250.6a and b. The code clarifies that ground faults are not considered objectionable currents. D. Limitations to permissible alterations. 
The provisions of this section shall not be considered as permitting electronic equipment from being operated on AC systems or branch circuits that are not connected to an equipment grounding conductor as required by this article. Currents that introduce noise or data errors in electronic equipment shall not be considered the objectionable currents addressed in this section. This section highlights that currents causing noise or data errors in electronic equipment are not considered objectionable currents. Some manufacturers recommended a separate isolated ground reference electrode for sensitive electronic equipment to prevent interference from building ground noise. This separate isolated ground reference electrode is called a clean ground. Isolated grounding and bonding can help reduce the risks associated with electrical noise, interference, ground loops, and common mode voltages. However, it is crucial to note that this type of installation can also present significant electrical shock hazards. Connecting a remote grounding electrode in this manner creates a ground fault return path through the earth, which is both high resistance and high impedance. Moreover, this approach violates our code, as all grounding electrodes should be bonded together to form a grounding electrode system. To ensure safe grounding and bonding practices while minimizing noise and data errors, our code provides specific requirements outlined in sections 250.96b. This section permits the interruption of electrical continuity in non-current carrying metal parts used to supply power to electronic equipment susceptible to electromagnetic interference. Additionally, section 250.146d allows for the use of receptacles with grounding terminals insulated from the frame to reduce the potential coupling of electromagnetic interference through the equipment grounding conductor. Section 250.6e Isolation of Objectionable Direct Current from Cathodic Protection Systems If isolation of objectionable direct current from cathodic protection systems is required, a listed isolator device shall be permitted in the equipment grounding conductor path to provide an effective return path for AC ground fault current while blocking the flow DC current. Cathodic protection is a highly effective technique employed to prevent corrosion on metal surfaces. The provided illustration depicts a standard installation of an impressed current cathodic protection system. In this setup, the metal pipe that requires protection is considered the cathode, while the anode, through which current is discharged, is placed within the same electrolyte, typically soil, where the buried pipe is located. To provide the necessary energy, rectifiers of different sizes and motor generator equipment are utilized. These energy sources supply electrons to the system and generate the corrosion current, simulating the corroding process that would typically occur at the anode. While cathodic protection is vital, it can conflict with another important requirement, safety grounding and bonding. For effective cathodic protection, the structure or pipe being protected must be electrically isolated from all other structures, including grounding systems. If the structure is not isolated and is bonded to the grounding system, the cathodic protection system must also protect the added area. Moreover, most grounding systems employ copper, which ranks higher on the galvanic series of metals, resulting in a larger voltage difference and increased current flow to the copper. Additionally, when the grounding system is bonded to the utility grounding, the cathodic protection system also ends up protecting them. As a result, the cathodic protection system's effectiveness in protecting a specific pipeline may be compromised, leading to a shorter anode lifespan or higher rectifier output. This is one reason why isolating a cathodically protected pipeline is necessary. However, electrical codes require that metals susceptible to becoming energized, such as during lightning strikes or surges, be grounded and bonded to achieve equipotential. This is accomplished by installing a listed isolator device. The purpose of this device is to block cathodic protection current under normal conditions, making the structure appear isolated. However, when voltage attempts to rise on the pipeline, the isolating device activates and performs its positive protective function by solidly connecting the structure to the ground or another bonding point to maintain a low and safe voltage. Once the event is over, the device automatically switches back to its normal mode of blocking DC. Additionally, under normal conditions, this device exhibits low resistance to AC and high resistance to DC. The provided photo serves as an example of an installed decoupler by Dairyland, showcasing such a device in practice. Thank you all for watching.